the children's YouTuber with an interesting past. Now, can I ask everybody here, does anybody here know Blippi? Uh, it's it's a, a child YouTuber named Blippi. Bro, he has 20 million subs. And yeah, apparently he's very controversial for doing weird things in the past. He on a man. Okay, let, let's get to that. Hold on, we need to watch the video. We need to get to that. But yeah, he, he very much did do that. Hold on, let me see. Let me check his social blade. I'm going to break down the revenue. Peep this. Peep this real quick. He's getting 117 million views in a month. Okay. I'm telling y'all, according, and since he's a kid YouTuber, he's making minimum a month a million. I swear to you. These, I think these are these are less accurate. I think he's making more. Way more than that. Let's just get to the video. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. Okay. What are the chances you know Blippy? Because mm. given the sheer size he of He has his own Netflix show. Oh my god. Hey, do y'all think y'all could do that in the chat? Like, do y'all think you could be on camera? Hey guys, every, today we're gonna be playing with this with this Among Us super poppy toy. Today we're gonna be doing this Among Us, this Among Us. I damn near want to end it. But at the same time, for money, for like a mill a month, y'all ain't yes for the bag. I'm about to say, no, I dead ass will come on camera like that. I'm selling my soul. I don't care. I'm selling my soul. Channel, I'd say it's extremely it's no likely ten. you've come across as a blue mm. and orange hat wearing man, especially if you have younger siblings. I will say, at least he makes like better content than some of the other brain rotted on youtube kids you know what I'm saying? or if you have kids yourself or maybe for some reason you enjoy the videos watching are children's right? content if or you've never heard of blippy right? well that's no problem because i'll do my best to introduce you to this man right here go, yeah man. this dude he averages over 100 million monthly hey, views on youtube he can be described as using his Better whirlwind of energy Melon? and bright colors to keep millions of three-year-olds out there glued to their youtube screens simply browse through his videos and you'll definitely see how he does it he just reeks of mm. fun and learning around any imaginable kids yes. topic from jungle Better Animals, else again? indoor playgrounds, Halloween songs, two museums, aquariums, and rather oddly, even NASCAR racing. And you've really what gotta believe hell? me when I say this dude's popular because he has 935 million views on just one oh my god video do y'all realize how insane that is? Both of the channels combined maybe have like 80 mil total. <laughs> total, maybe. And I'm saying a big maybe. This is music video numbers. It's like when we checked we checked Ryan's toys reviews. He has a video with like 2.1 billion. And in classic kids fashion, it's about an obscure, I guess not that obscure topic. It's, just, it's jungle animals. Kids really rule the internet, don't they? Anyway, we'll mm. come back to his success later in the video. What I want to focus on on this video is the disgusting past of everyone's best friend Blippy, who's actually gone through some great lengths to keep his past hidden. It actually has mm. come as a surprise to many that Blippy, real name Stephen John hasn't always been the child's hero we see today. Before setting off to start the Blippi mm. YouTube channel back in 2014 and becoming the huge success he is, Stephen John, who by the way changed his legal name from Stephen J. Grossman, had a much different life in Los Angeles. He was a filmmaker and created content that, let's just say, it was uh, not family- Oh, filmmaker? You know if they call anybody a filmmaker or, or content creator? Like, that's why I can't call myself a content creator if people meet me. I just gotta be like I'm a YouTuber or a streamer because they immediately go and think OF. Friendly. Like, at all. He played this persona mm. called Steezy Grossman, and what he did was make films that have- Genie. Mistletoe Kissing Prank. Pea Troubles. March and Mustache Madness. What are these titles, man? Blipster. They don't caught you, man. They don't caught you. I don't know much about you, but I'm gonna let it play. They have been termed low about? budget and low brow with titles like Turd Boy and The Un- Underwear man. One of the things I'm talking about is his R-rated twist on the Harlem Blippi? Shake meme. The Harlem Shake poop video. Oh, that's why I know about him. That's the only thing I know about. I hope tell please don't play the video. <laughs> Do not play the Harlem Shake video. Please, I'm not trying to get banned. Do not play it. That's literally the only thing I knew. I just remember one day people were talking on Twitter like, hey, haven't you seen this video? And I see it. And I just see it in my eye. That's the worst video I've ever seen in my life. Oh, where he poops on his friend in the video. He poops on his friend. Oh. Oh in the video, God. obviously, I'm not gonna show that. But but hold your horses, guys. We're gonna get there, okay? There's no amount of money that I would ever do to do this. This is just the intro of the video. It's insane to think that the same person who found that funny is currently the roller coaster of all things fun and education for kids from all over the world. With all that being said, let's get into it. That let's too. take a deep dive into how this filmmaker, who was a custodian of extremely horrifying humor, transformed mm. into a really loved children's entertainer. We'll also be taking a look at what parents think of him 
him now, now that his past is no longer hidden. And now, okay. a quick word from our sponsor. I recently found now out- Now, a quick word from- You guys check that out if you guys want to. Let's get back to the topic. Nobody explained it. Blippi's empire explained. The Let's appropriate go. place to start is the castle that Blippi has built. I'm not talking a literal castle. I'm talking about his financial castle. The obvious part we've mm. already talked about is that Blippi is popular among children. And that's not because his content covers singing, dancing, playing, and exploring, all of which are exciting for kids. Rather, it's because he found a really engaging way to answer questions that kids find puzzling. His channel's description tells it all as he states, Come explore the wondrous world with everybody's best friend, Blippi. How does a recycling truck work? What does a baker do? What is the best mm. playground around? There are many exciting things to explore and learn. Now, before we go even further, I mean, on it seems like at least, yeah, he has like groundwork better than some some creators. Like I said, style. Like, let's take creators. a look at his numbers. He is currently at 19.2 million subscribers with 829 total videos posted. That's on his main channel, Blippy mm. Educational Videos for Kids. Those are highly impressive figures on their own, but he has two more channels, Blippy Toys, which has 11.3 million subscribers Damn, bro. and just over 700 uploaded videos, and Blippy Español, which has a whopping 16 points. Yo, I gotta get on this shit, man. I gotta get on a. a I gotta get an Español channel, man. I remember Mr. Beast, ever since I saw Mr. Beast made all those like different, <laughs> he made the Spanish channel first. That shit had like 30 million. I don't even know if it's still running. Two million. Tommy and FG in Espanol. Like somebody AIs my voice and translates it. Subscribers and just about 600. How did he even con convince his friend? Okay, are y'all getting shot on like that for 100K? 100 bands just in your bank account. Like that. I can't do it for, no. Nah. I'm never doing it in my life, bro. Maybe I'm just too religious or something like that. That's just like horrific, dude. Yeah, look at y'all, man. Y'all are sick individuals. Yes, yes. No, no, no. 163 videos. That. That's a combined 46.7 million it. YouTube subscribers and combined 2,200 videos. Together, mm. these channels have earned him about 37 billion total views. Oh my to put that God. into perspective, that's almost as much as Mr. Beast's main channel. That one oh has 41 God. billion views. Being curious about his income, I checked on social. But the thing is, he isn't as popular. Like, I feel some people be surprised. He's, it's, it's for kids. Like, kids are watching that. Played and found the Adults estimation watch to be Mr. anywhere Beast. between 30,000 and 475,000 in monthly YouTube earnings. But take that with a grain of salt because money determination on those types of websites is not really touching that accurate. It's just to get a ballpark estimate. But that doesn't go to say, if like you're seeing those kinds of views, you're definitely seeing a pretty penny. Now, with these figures in mind, let's what go back to smell the style. Of that bathroom? I think what sets Blippi apart, as I already mentioned, is that he found an engaging way go back to his style. I think what sets Blippi apart, as I already mentioned, is that he found an engaging way to talk about things kids care about. His content mm. is undoubtedly colorful, high energy, and educational all rolled into one. All videos mm. start out with this catchy tune, so much to learn about, it'll make you want to shout Blippi. And right from the start, his clown adjacent dressing, the high-pitched voice, playful music, and constant pop-ups as he explains stuff would probably be irresistible to any three-year-old. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. He seems pretty- I mean, what would y'all rather play for your kids, like a Blippi video? Video or like a Coco Melon video. Pretty good at what he does. I'm personally uh, playing my kids shit like Diego and and, and w w what else is like a good childhood show like Thomas the Tank Engine. I won't even talk about the production quality because it's sort of expected from a channel that size. Actually, I mm. should mention that Blippi as a brand was acquired by a company called Moonbug back in 2020. And Moonbug okay. isn't a tiny company. It has over 309 employees and could afford to pay $120 million for Blippi and Coco Melon. Oh so yeah, God. no surprise in the production quality What's at up, all. Boxes? It's What's also up? not What's surprising up, that Blippi would have a whole whole host of merchandise <laughs> readily available for his audience. Just a quick Don't search on Amazon better. and there's yeah, an endless facts. variety of blippy stuff from toy. What the hell? Best 11k reviews on the sippy cup? Oh my god, what the hell? Clothing, books, to even the TV show. Their Amazon storefront also looks pretty nice, I'd say. And there's more. For example, they do city tours with tickets costing about $25 and have even collaborated with Liverpool FC for an event and special edition merch. What yeah, the, the football club. Also, if Blippi looks different, that's because he is. We'll get to that. I haven't even mentioned all the commercial Blippi inspired stuff out there that Steven mm. John and his team are not profiting from. Honestly, it's quite an empire this dude has built in just 10 years. Hey, and all while that? at it, he has of course gotten the attention of many, given media features in CBS News, Forbes, Mashable, and others. The 2017 to 2018 period particularly earned him lots of recognition by the media for reasons only the kids' channel gods may know. It's money and numbers. All those articles I've mm. shown you are from that time. I might as well throw it in here that some moms had, or maybe still have, the hots for Blippi, and are now deleted thread what? in a Reddit mom group. Someone posts, does anyone else want to f Blippi?
these single moms be so horny, man? Why they be so horny? What the hell? <laughs> nah, they there for that bag, 100%. Hey, man, posting that as a mom on Reddit, imagine your child growing up and seeing that comment like 10 years later. Glibby got that risen him. Way to sexualize the thing your kids watch. Anyway, while browsing yeah. articles written about him, I found an interesting reason Probably why he was able to, to start kids. the Glibby channel so successfully. But before we get to that, let's switch gears and get into his really weird backstory. A weird Talk backstory. Me, Let me begin by reminding you that Stephen John changed his legal name from Better Stephen J. Grossman. It's therefore very likely that anyone who knows him as Stephen John wouldn't be able to recognize That's him. That's a terrible last name, by the way. Terrible choice by his parents. From his Steezy Grossman. Grossman and persona. It's no wonder that BuzzFeed put it this way. While some may have seen Blippy throw the first pitch at a 20. Oh my guys, last name is legit gross man. Come on. Arizona Diamondbacks game, they've almost certainly never heard of Steezy Grossman. So first, let's clear the question. Why was no Steven making went films? Turns out he went to UCLA Extension to study cinematography and film okay. production. And okay. so he was right within his alley with the acting and filming stuff. The problem is with his Steezy Grossman persona, he chose a rather odd route and adult rated route to take. He was a mm. turd boy. You heard that right, a turd boy. In a fake trailer for a film called Turd Boy, Steezy plays a like role this that is hard to describe not because of its complex that is that is definitely shit smeared on his face i can tell from the blur city but rather it's nastiness basically it's about getting pregnant from anal sex and then the baby comes out but it's half poop half human so it's called turd boy and the whole little skit fake trailer video he made is about the kid i guess yo stop talking bro stop telling me this don't stop telling me this man what that is the most disgusting, disgusting type. I would. Oh my god! How do they think of things like this? You want to? You go to college for a degree for this? He is freaky. I think that's more than freaky. I think that's more than freaky. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a surprise that, you know, people are kind of concerned about his background. It's getting bullied and it going through Logan life Paul and its troubles and it's like him covered in makeup prosthetics of poop. So it's pretty, oh it's pretty gross. God. And apparently he was really proud of this accomplishment saying, good times filming this thing. Crew was amazing. Cast was awesome. And I can't say enough. It was awesome making out with Carolina. Isn't it surprising the kind of film festivals they had back then? I mean, if I read it right, there was a 2012 International Ship Movie Film Festival. The other one was the what? 2012 Machinima Interactive Film Festival. Out of curiosity- Yo, I'm, I'm so glad festivals like fell off a little bit because <laughs> like what bro this is like pre nowadays you just f you could probably find a group that's into that shit on like reddit or something yeah, I actually tried to find out what the Death International Fest. Ship Movie Film Festival was all about, and I found this interesting set of regulations where, among other things, they required submissions to be odd. For example, they mm. say, the art of, quote, bad on purpose, end quote, is exciting to us. And think outside the box. We like weird, zany, and insane uh, shit. Anyway, going back yeah, to CZ, so a quick search on the internet archive will show you that I don't these go roles back in were time nothing now. new to him. For instance, I found that he also did Pea Troubles, Dick Genie, and Underwear Man. So yeah, pretty strong choice of content definitely leaning more towards the NSM. This is like something South Park would do animated though, not in real life. Side. Unsurprisingly though, that turd theme would later feature in his other shenanigans such as the Harlem Shake Poop. The Harlem Shake Poop. All right, so before we oh talk gosh. about his twist on the Harlem Shake, Let's talk about the Harlem Shake. That is, if you somehow didn't hear about it in 2012. I don't know. Uh, some of you born in 2012? I have no idea. Mm. Basically, Do it was- Do kids not know the Harlem Shake? Damn. Dance that- Nah, in five years, I'm, I'm gonna say- Oh my god, remember the Harlem Shake? I know there's gonna be like some kid that doesn't know it. Came from it's a song. But we're gonna take a closer look at it just to really show you how far Steven went with this thing. So as already mentioned, the whole thing was originated from a song. A track titled Harlem Shake by American DJ and producer Bauer. This heavy bass instrumental track, though released in 2012, later grew wildly popular and it sparked a dance series in 2013. Not to say that the dance didn't exist before, but it was definitely- Bro, it's crazy because Filthy Frank made the, the Harlem Shake. People don't even know that. Popularized with this trend. Need in to the bring song, it back? there's a lyric, no do the Harlem Shake. And that's where like everyone just goes crazy. Woo, woo. But before the lead up, or I guess during the lead up, it's usually one person dancing. You know, they look a little awkward. You're watching the video. You're like, damn, this dude's pretty awkward. <laughs> Unless you already know what's going to happen. Crunchy, you're showing like your age, bro. Stop, stop universe. talking about you. But then the do the Harlem Shake a voice. <laughs> I sound so stupid saying this. Then the beat. Bro, they don't have trends like the Harlem Shake anymore. It's kind of, it's kind of sad. Drops. Like, so what's the latest trend where, like, the whole world was doing something? That's why I kind of miss pre, like, everybody having social media. Or, like, you would just see stuff online. Okay. And then There's every nothing like the Harlem Shake. 
Everyone goes crazy. What do we have? The devious look, the gritty. Oh my god! Please, please. Oh, oh my god! Terrible. So <laughs> that's a little little throwback. Tide pods. <laughs> it might have been tide pods, honestly. It might have been tide pods. Skibidi toilet W. It's it's not none of that. No. And yes, that is Joji in that pink morph suit. Totally a fact that uh, no one t no one knew that. I'm the first person to find out that Joji was in that pink morph suit. No, I knew so that. don't you dare comment saying that you already knew that, right? Already that was definitely that. a fact no one likes spamming in comments of videos. You can definitely see why Urban Dictionary defined the dance as an electric upper body dance move that involves the shaking of your upper torso and shoulders. I have to admit, I went down the Harlem Shake rabbit Power hole. Power Rangers on yes, top. Yes, there's a Harlem Shake rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole for anything. And I found some pretty mm. odd origins. I found this obviously fake definition, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. That its true origin came from 125th and Lexington, New York, where gangsters would shoot unsuspecting crippled people with crutches and, and the staggering fall of these people would become the dance. Yeah, this is just some internet. I'm not even about to ask, bro. They just be making up anything. <laughs> Conspiracy theorists niggas are the worst. Like, I swear, it's just a fun dance. It's just a fun dance people thought of. What? Why are you doing all that? It, 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 there's no world where it's that deep. Internet bullshit. Although, to be fair, there is a different They're version not gonna of see its the origin Gates. story, which is a lot more believable. Where it's believed that the dance was invented by a guy known as Al B to imitate drunk people. Anyway, mm. as the dance got introduced to local parties in Harlem, it just started becoming just a gonna thing. Ignore and that. it went viral for sure. Extremely viral. There's a whole compilation of people in the office, people in the army, mascots, you know, the WWE, just doing this trend. It was honestly, it was a good time in history. I miss that. I even made mm. one as a kid. Though, that is lost me media i did find a video of me dancing as a banana at nine years old I'm a banana. yo this is terrible looks <laughs> y'all never get any footage of me like this when i was a kid remember that yeah, yeah. now nah, we all had cringy videos like this though as, as a kid <laughs> Damn, look at the TV too. Like the average TV in a room in a kid's room. Man, this was the average TV, man. Now now it would be the size of the wall and shit like that. <laughs> All right. I don't know how to transition to the next well, topic, but uh did. let's get to the next section. Now, going back to our guy Steven, he decided mm. he wanted to be a part of this trend, but in a very unique way. He called his version the Harlem Shake Poop. And because I can't show the video, I'll try my best to describe it without getting demonetized. So the scene is right. set in a normal bathroom. He's sitting on the toilet with his pants. Don't draw it out. Oh my god. <laughs> down to his ankles to and he's out. wearing a cycling helmet and some goggles and you know the song is building up the classic harlem shake build up and he's dancing there's no one else in the in the toilet with him or in the room the bathroom and then it's like, i don't want to know shake and extremely gross warning here he then diarrheas onto his friend who's laying upside down on the ground it's like a missile of brown so uh definitely not showing that but <laughs> It's a real. It looks exactly like that in the video too. Oh my god. Real video. I watched it, and it is. It is Blippy. It's our boy Blippy. You know, <laughs> pre blip. <laughs> <sighs> That's terrible. <laughs> god. Yep, morbid documentaries, guys. This is what we do. Here. Oh, did I mention that his friend was also butt naked? Well, he was. Again, saying I that- I couldn't even be naked around my friends. Like, like, I couldn't even be naked around my friends. That's just- That's too close. I don't know. I know women be doing that. Like, it's actually- I don't know how the- the video is gross is uh it's an understatement as this redditor put it that was 1000 times worse than whatever i thought it would be now this side of blippy may have remained hidden how did they even find this video who found this video buzzfeed article yeah buzzfeed of all companies were the people that brought this to light to be specific oh, wow. it was a buzzfeed article from 2019 and mm. in the classic style of media the Get story out my was head, published please. over and over and over again by other publishing medias and of course it was all over social media Medium, like this reddit post some youtube videos talking about it the aftermath was also in the form of pushback by some parents this article for example suggests that some parents would need therapy to quote cope with the news that blippy shat on someone <laughs> end quote okay it's not that deep man yo maybe i've just I i'm too traumatized for looking at the from looking at the internet as a kid but i've seen way worse as a kid another article details the response from it a is Therapy? I uh, was saying therapy? Bro, I was looking at ISIS beheading videos in middle school. If anybody needs therapy, it should be me. And I don't need it. 
Maybe you do need a therapist. I probably do need a therapist, yeah. I'll never forget when I saw, like, a woman giving pregnant at, like, eight, year old, eight years old on YouTube. Just randomly. just popped up. Mom of two in Virginia who said, This kind of changes the game for me as far as letting my kids watch his videos. It just feels weird to know that he participated in these disgusting acts and has now shifted his focus to working with children. We wouldn't let a teacher with that background work with kids. Why would a child entertainer be any different? Using copyright mm. laws to hide the dark past. So again, just so we're on the same page here, in 2019, BuzzFeed revealed his past. And what did Blippi do? Well, he and slash or his team filed a DMCA copyright infringement claim against Buzzfeed. BuzzFeed to not publish the video anywhere and a DMCA claim. I mean, shit, I probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> for anyone who might not know, <laughs> allows a person, the copyright holder, to get someone else, like a website, to take down user-uploaded material that belongs to the copyright holder. So in mm. our case, Steven was the owner of the Harlem Shake Poop video and used the copyright law to get BuzzFeed to not publish the video anywhere. It also turns out that he didn't only send a legal notice of infringement to BuzzFeed, he also sent it to Google after a Russian website hosted it and Google indexed it. A Vice article what? also clarifies that in an interview, Blippi said- Blippi's the only man to take down Google. How did he do it? that it wasn't the BuzzFeed report that prompted his response. Rather, he had already been Isn't doing the song that for years yeah, whenever it, it popped is. up somewhere it online. Is. He specifically said, it wasn't BuzzFeed's reporting that led me to try to get the video taken down. I've been doing that for years, pretty much whenever and wherever I find it up somewhere. He also came after the Vice people a little bit, saying, filing a takedown notice hardly qualifies as going to, quote, extreme lengths. I don't know, man. It's it's a, I, th I, think, it's, I think it's pretty it's extreme. It's a little bit extreme, I don't know if you yeah. think that, Blippi. Poop man. I'm gonna call you poop man for the rest of the video, and I'm not, and I'm not. Now, winding back a bit to the DMCA part, you can see that on the takedown request sent to Google, the original HarlemShakePoop.com, they made a whole website for the video. The original URL is specified as harlemshakepoop.com. Why is that important to know? Well, I want Someone's you to get a search sense of how committed Blippi was to going viral. Having a All dedicated right. website means that Blippi wanted people to visit it. More on that later. Anyway, thanks to the unforgetting nature of the internet, you can actually look it up. I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm okay. And I, hey, if you look it up and, and you know what I'm saying, just, just know that I warned you and, and Tubbington right here has warned people as well. Don't look it up that but you can look that up on google and, and search it, it up on accident help it's already over for you pops up right there Might on well the start internet therapy archive now. again i'm not not recommending that no don't do that that was just an educational statement this is an educational video guys so youtube mm. reviewer if you're watching this this is an educational video about a weird topic oh, anyway, man, get the shit out of after me. all this information came <sighs> out well blippy responded so let's get to what he said blippy's I... apology and transformation let's actually start with his response to the buzzfeed article because that's where most of the information about the poop saga comes from in a statement to buzzfeed he said at the time i thought this sort of thing was funny but really it was stupid and tasteless and i regret having ever funny what is funny about that what is funny about that done it he also said i've grown up a lot since then and i trust people will see me as the person i am now not the idiot i was back then that response has two things that it communicates strongly one is that he obviously regrets his past and two he's alluding to the fact that he's changed as a person however like a shadow i'm not even saying like he didn't change or whatever i'm not saying he can't be a child youtuber bro what was funny about that society is falling his past keeps lingering and Jesus there's Christ, no real bro, way to shake it off. In fact, a, a good way to perceive arc. this is to think of what our community now insinuated. Should John's checkered history determine the fate of his beloved character Blippi? In other words, should bad history mean that a person can never change? This is a topic that we've actually talked about in mm. my YouTubers that ruin their lives video, specifically mm. the Shane Dawson part, because these are people that have done really horrible things. Blippi was just disgusting. I don't think he like hurt anyone, but believing in growth, you know, if you want to believe in that someone- Y'all think, think he should be, he, like, he shouldn't be a child YouTuber because of this, or should he? No, Shane Dawson is actually, like, that dude is actually low-key, low high-key EDP. Like, like, no joke. Similar. Similar. Has grown. That's- I mean, if he does hate what he did and moved on, he deserves a second chance. That's what I'm saying, like- I don't really care to be honest. And but all I know is those kids that are watching him now, they're gonna see like 10 years in the future. <laughs> I know they're gonna see that video. I know they're gonna see that video. On you, but 
usually there is uh, evidence, you know? If, if, if this dude hasn't done anything crazy in 10 years, it's more than likely that he's changed, but you know, we'll never know behind closed doors. Stephen's lawyer actually put it as, it was a consensual, non-sexual poop joke. No one got hurt. It's not sexist or criminal or problematic. It's just pure jackass oh. prank stupidity. Flippy also nah, don't compare to jackass to that. Jackass never, they never did something like that. His past. Again, he emphasized that he was regretful of having made the poop video or even finding that kind of entertainment funny. He said, although I thought stuff like the Harlem Shake poop video was funny when I was in my early 20s, these days I'm really embarrassed that I ever did any Thing as stupid and gross as that. He even took a jab at the journalistic standards of both Vice name? and BuzzFeed. He implied that Vice, and I've already mentioned this, was inaccurate for saying he went to extreme lengths to try to get the video taken down after the BuzzFeed article came out. He suggested that BuzzFeed's article was not, quote, a blockbuster investigative report, end quote, as Vice phrased it. And the sheer fact mm. that Vice thought that was true was reflective of deteriorated journalistic standards. Basically, I think he was just trying to tell him that y'all hyped up this video of me pooping, and uh, it's not worth the hype. But Blippi, let me tell you something, it is worth the hype. It is, in uh, fact- That's very much interesting, worth the hype. Okay, there are parents who are still on his side, even after discovering his past. Our community now reported, mm. for some parents, the apology is sincere, and the benefits of Blippi outweigh his past history. One parent, for instance, speaking to BuzzFeed said, do I want my kid to go and give him a hug? Probably not, but I also don't want to deprive my kid of his- Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Yo, fuck. I had a kid that was watching Blippy, and then Blippy came like, Come on and give Blippy a hug! Give Blippy a hug! Get the f away, bro. I'm sorry that man is gonna smack the f up and beat up. Nobody, I'm, I would never forget that image if I was a parent at a kid that was watching Blippy. No. I also don't want to deprive my kid of his construction videos that have actually really helped boost his language skills. I just might not watch that chocolate factory video again. I don't know exactly mm. which video she's referring to, but I'm willing to bet this one. Anyway, the point is that even after- What the hell? Some parents discover his past. They're not gonna go through the effort for to tech cancel him. I, I, I and this is obviously kind of true, given his growth in the past couple of years. At the time that BuzzFeed published our article, the channel was at about 3.6 million YouTube subscribers, and that number has now grown to 19.2 million. And his other yeah. channels have also experienced a similar trend. There's a chance growth means people love him, right? Viral strategy using past skills. Now, while that poop stuff is a major controversy, that isn't the only thing that puts people off when it comes to Blippy. For example, there's an entire Reddit thread framing him as just a guy after money with no care for the children he's supposed to be entertaining. The thread, which- I mean, to be fair, that's most YouTube kids creators. Like, you're not about to sit on videos every day like, Hey guys, um, today we're going to be playing with this Among Us plushie over here. Uh, Among Us, Among Us, Among Us. You're not about to be doing that without without money in, in, in mind, you know? Could be just- a I will be doing that. I will be doing that. Fair. Mentions that Blippi seems obsessed with brand growth given how he's always emphasizing the kids to spell out his name and search it mm. online, sort of drilling his brand into their young minds. But if you want to watch more of my videos, all you have to do is search for my name. Will you spell my name with me? Ready? Make sure you drop a like and super duper subscribe. Blippi, good job. The thread also mentions an interview where Blippi talked a lot about his approach at the beginning of his content journey, including living in LA for six years and learning skills like online content marketing. There's also a mentioning yeah. of the bewildering large merchandising operation that he runs. Name? And Chat. again, his prior Stop. skill set and career path have nothing to do with kids. Now, take all this information with a grain of salt because we are talking about a Reddit rant here. But still, I hope you can see some of the other things that people find unpleasant about Blippi. And I'm not saying that just based on that Reddit rant. Nope. If you actually search around on the internet, you'll find parents even talking about how they just don't like his vibe from the jump without even having learned about the Harlem Shake thing. Anyway, the reason I brought up that Reddit thread is because of one of mm. Blippi's critical skill sets, SEO specialist. Right from the start, before he even made the Blippi channel, it seems like Steven was committed to finding ways to go viral through entertainment. I actually like how BuzzFeed mm. phrased it. They said, beneath the surface, Blippi and Steezy Grossman share two traits, a willingness to debase themselves, be it clownish antics or taking a literal dump for entertainment and a methodical calculated that's what i'm saying yo if you got the right marketing for to use social media. like you could basically do anything do anybody here that wants to become a creator i mean unless you pay people i'm pretty sure seo is actually like paying people and its algorithms to reach as many eyeballs as possible. In short, he would go to any lengths to go viral. This ties in really mm. well with him being an SEO Walk specialist in his past. SEO means search engine optimization. And an SEO specialist is a job where a person essentially learns how a search engine like Google works in terms of ranking content, and then tries to use that knowledge to rank their content high on search results. YouTube uses that same idea, except it's ranking YouTube videos. So Blippi, with such knowledge of ranking factors, almost had the secrets 
sauce when it came to making viral content. As he explains in an interview, he gave the channel, quote, a good foundation of SEO. That is more so um, giving it a good foundation of SEO and then from there creating more and more videos with good foundation of SEO. Once he had that going, it was just a matter of spamming videos. Now, in case you're still lost of what I'm talking about here, think of it this way. For example, if kids are searching up Skibbity Toilet on YouTube, how would you get them to find you? Well, you make a video revolving around Skibbity Toilet. There's a chance that's you'll- That's what I just said. That's why all the Make Among Us, that it's always like a trend with kid YouTubers. They'll make like a whatever's trending an Among Us video. They still do that. They still do that, by the way. They do, a, 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 I guess, a blippy video, whatever. They just push in the thumbnail, and now it's Skibbity Toilet. So they're going to be using Skibbity Toilet for the next, like, a year or two before it falls off. Appear in the search results. Lanky box. Oh, my God. I wish you guys never told me about that channel. It's, they wouldn't <laughs> click on a video, you know, my, my vlog, my trip to the mall. You got to hop on trending topics. It's, it's almost how I blew up. It, well, it's, it's, it's exactly how I blew up. You just hop mm. on trending topics. But he, he did it in a crazy way in terms of kid trends like very niche things i don't i don't know how else to describe that you can do your own research on seo especially when it comes to children's content but that's a different world it's the same Man, youtube algorithm real? but it's just a different world because i feel like kid trends just last for years like there are still kids watching baby shark videos you know the point here is that yeah, whether no, baby shark that, that's your ticket to, to youtube kingdom money whether it was YouTube poop videos or making content for children. He's a smart dude. Remember that even his Harlem Shake video had its own website, www.harlemshakepoop.com. And this was back in 2013 when websites weren't that easy to make. TechCrunch did actually publish an article showing just how much search traffic- They made a whole website. I'm just really thinking, oh my God. The term Harlem Shake was so getting dumb. at the time. Now also worth mentioning is that with a background on SEO and online marketing, it's no mm. wonder that Blippi could see an opportunity in the market and take it. One neat trick SEO specialists use is that if you search for a specific phrase and nothing of value comes up, that's a sign they can create content around that phrase and rank first on Google's platforms. That's exactly how Steven's channel started. He says, my two-year-old nephew wanted to watch tractor videos online, but all we could find was, well, garbage. The videos certainly weren't educational. I wanted to bring positive emotions and experiences to the act of learning. I wanted to share my curiosity with others. I wanted to make videos my nephew would be both- Bro, Baby Shark music video made a Nickelodeon show out of it. That's what I'm saying. Baby Shark is a monopoly. You get anything trending if you're like that skibbity toilet dude i really think y'all don't understand he's making like three four mil a month entertained Easy. and educated Easy. by his bet on children's content was also based on the lack of good content on youtube yeah, he like explains he said, that most you market of the you got the market then was the just market, on cable free content was market not yourself. good and he gives the example of tractor videos that had nothing other than just tractors with background music pre-2014 era youtube wasn't much of a career for many people there damn were hold on let's see this real quick top youtubers of 2014 PewDiePie, Vanoss Gaming, who else do I recognize? Watch Mojo, Smosh, Good Mythical Morning, Markiplier, Stampy Cat, Fousey 2, One Direction, what the hell? Damn, this was a, this was peak. Good times. There were a few lucky ones that a lot of us watched, Where but Jack that was it. So it was obvious that because people saw it as a fun platform, they didn't put too much thought into the production quality of their content. Times were mm. just different. Music videos were leading in views, They're for not instance. Doing like this now Mr. Beast can get more views than a mainstream artist on a couple videos. Hashtag not my blippy. Now let's wrap this up by highlighting some of the recent, or maybe not so recent, drama facing the blippy brand. You got and more honestly, allegations? There's not much to it other than the addition of a new blippy actor. But this has come with resistance from many parents. The new guy, Clayton Grimm, says he ended up in the position because he'd been hired to play Blippi in Blippi the Musical after auditioning four times. Yeah, there's also a musical. This was back what? in 2019. Steven had apparently decided to look for How a second. What is he about to do on the musical? In Blippi so he could make more videos. Out of necessity, Grimm went from playing the musical. Jeez, this is kind of like doing too much at this point. To being flown to LA to make. It's like a Shaq and like Snoop Dogg are on every ad. <laughs> this is kind of unneeded. Content, and soon enough, he was everywhere that the original Blippi had been. This? We're talking about Hulu, HBO, Netflix, etc. Now, like I said, the drama was that some parents just resisted the fact that there was a new Blippi actor. Even though he wasn't taking it over, he was just filling in sometimes. Under the hashtag NotMyBlippi, you can find videos- I feel like this only works for kid YouTubers, though. Like, could y'all think- Oh, no, actually, no. I was about to say, isn't Matt Pat about to replace- Like, he's about to have a replacement for Game Theory. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's about to just fall off. Because nobody's going to be able to replace somebody like MatPat. This only works with, like, kids. Because kids don't pay attention or anything. Like, they don't care. It's all talking about the parents' dissatisfaction. Apparently, in the comments, mm. some of the moms even implied that Grimm was the wish version of the real Blippi. Kids were also not left behind in expressing their disappointment. Oh, wait, they actually... Oh, she's so angry. <laughs> oh, they actually did care. I guess they can't tell. 
Yup, and that's really HBO it for this video. Us. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you think I'm... I will, man. I will absolutely like it, man. Honestly, interesting investigation into uh, uh, Blippy. Are y'all going to be showing your kids Blippy? I'm going to be honest. I'm showing my kids like the old cartoons. I'm not showing them this new shit. I, I just simply can't. Can't. No, sadly, no, no. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be showing them some... I don't know, something better. Something better, like some Sid the Science kid or, or, or something different. But yeah, uh, if you're watching this on the tube... Join the Discord.